never ever be afraid of a pressure canner. Trust me, they are made so well these days. I'm gonna show you how to get over those fears and start using your pressure canner. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming onto my channel. I'm Janelle and I do a ton of canning content. Today I'm going to be doing part of our series of the Waste Not series, pumpkin edition. You can see back here, I have pumpkin over here and over here that we are processing today. And I'm going to teach you how to get over those fears of the pressure canner and to pressure can your pumpkin. So the first place I want you to go to, go to the extension website. I'm going to have it linked down below in the description of this video. That is where you're gonna find what pressure you need because it's based on your elevation. Since I live in the upper Midwest, we are below a thousand feet above sea level. So we only need 10 pounds of pressure in the pressure canner. If you are above two to 3,000 feet above sea level, you are going to need to add pressure and add cooking time. So before we go into the recipe, let me show you the basics of the pressure canner and why you shouldn't be afraid of it. So this is the lid of my pressure canner. I have a Presto, which I will have linked below. And if you wanna grab yours from Amazon, you can. This is the one I'm using. It's a dial gauge. So this is where I'm going to show you where the pressure is. So this is going to tell you once it's reached the pressure that it needs to be at, and then you're going to want to maintain that pressure either on or above the pressure that you need. Since I need 10 pounds of pressure, I need to be on 10 or above 10. If it goes below that time or that pressure, then I need to start over. This gauge, this weight is what we're going to use to start the pressure because this is where the water or the air is released. So if the air is not being released by this weight, then it's gonna add pressure. The reason why you need to have the accurate amount of pressure and cooking time is because different foods have different levels of um, bacteria fighting agents. So like if they are low acidity, then they need more pressure and more time in order to cook properly and to kill off harmful bacteria. Normally, your elevation pressure is not going to change based off the food. It's really only related to the elevation. So the cooking time is what's going to fluctuate between foods, but your, your pressure, the amount of pressure you need is pretty much going to stay the same. Now I got this pumpkin recipe from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. It's like the canning Bible. Um, go grab yours from Amazon. It's linked below in my description. It is awesome. Over 400 recipes on water bath canning, um, pressure canning, fermenting, dehydrating, freezing. It has everything. So grab your copy. So first thing we're going to do is warm up our jars. They're fine sitting like this. There's um, three quarts of water in the bottom. Do not add more than three quarts of water to a pressure canner. That's all you need. And then I am heating up my pumpkin chunks right here. They're just about an inch wide chunk. That's all you need. That's how big they need. And they need to have the skins off. So, and I'm making chips with the skins. So that is the first step is to warm up your jars and your food. Next step, I am just going to fill the jars with the pumpkin, and then I'm going to add fresh boiling water on top of the pumpkin inside the jars. Then I'm going to make sure all the air bubbles are out. I'm going to wipe the rims with vinegar, and I'm gonna add clean lids and clean rings, and then put them in the pressure canner. All right, I have seven quart jars full of pumpkin and I actually have this much left. Now this would probably get me about three more quarts, but you know what? I'm just going to throw it into freezer bags. If I really wanted to, I could make up three more quart jars of pumpkin, but honestly, I'm gonna have a full pressure canner going. I don't really have time to do another 
load <laughs> necessarily. Um, I do have things to do. So don't feel bad if you freeze your food. Like if you're switching over to canning stuff, don't feel bad that you're freezing your food. I am literally going to throw these into Ziploc bags and throw them in my freezer because sometimes that's what, just what you have to do. So I'm just going to do that. You know what I almost didn't do? Put the hot water in. All right, now that we have all the <laughs> contents in the jar and the air bubbles are out, we wiped with vinegar, white vinegar, and then we put clean lids and clean rings on. Now the important thing about lids and their rings is that you only want the rings to be finger tight. You don't want to be wrenching on the lids to make them so tight that they can't properly seal. So make sure that they are only finger tight, not too tight. Now we're going to gently put them all into the pressure canner. Mine fits seven quarts at a time, so that is perfect. And then we're going to take the weight off and put our lid on. Now you're going to want to have your heat on high and you're going to want to have a steady stream of air coming out of here. So this is very important. Take the weight off and then this steam is going to be coming out of here once it's building pressure. Now, once you have a steady stream, not like spurts, you want a stream coming, you time for 10 minutes. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna go ahead and bag up the rest of my pumpkin for the freezer. Now my steam is not quite there yet, so while I'm waiting for it to get there to a steady stream, I'm going to prep my um, peels, my pumpkin peels to make chips. And if you haven't seen my video on that, go watch the video, I'll tag it in here and um, I'll show you how to make chips. But that's what I'm doing while I'm waiting. So while the pressure canner is going, I'm going to have my chips going. In my last video, I did them in the oven, but this time I'm just gonna do them in the dehydrator since I have things to do today. So I'm going to put the lid on top here. I'm actually going to set this to like the jerky setting. So about 160, just because the hide is tougher, um, the pieces are thicker. So I want to make sure that it's going to dry them out thoroughly without crisping them too much. We're just gonna leave that alone for about, mm, let's say, overnight. So it's about mm, one o'clock in the afternoon right now. I'm gonna check it again tonight and we might have to go again overnight. And if you have any scraps like this, just throw them in a bag to make homemade stock with all of the other vegetable scraps. So now that the timer is done, um, I put the weight on here so that way it creates that pressure. And you can already see that I'm above 10 pounds, so that's fine. I just need to maintain 10 or a little bit above, not too much above. So 10 pounds of pressure for me at my elevation or a little bit above, and we're going to time this for 90 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna have to check this regularly about every five minutes just to make sure that the pressure is accurate because if it goes below my recommended pressure, I'm gonna have to start all over, so don't wanna do that. Okay, now the 98 minutes are up, so I just turn the heat off, and that's all I'm going to do. Turn the heat off, and I'm not going to touch the pressure canner because it is hot. I'm not going to take the weight off because we want the pressure to come down naturally. Um, so leave it alone for a good, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes at least, so that way all the steam escapes, all the pressure goes down, and then you can take the lid off. But give yourself plenty, plenty of time before you take the jars out and let them cool for 24 hours. And there you have how to can pumpkin. I hope that you feel a little bit better about 
pressure canning and learning how to get started. Really, it is so helpful because it expands your horizons on the food that you can preserve at home. So I really, really encourage you to get yourself a pressure canner. I love my Presto. It is the first one I used and I think it's a really affordable uh, beginner's pressure canner. So I'll link that below. And if there's anything else that I can help you with, any questions, comment them below. And please like, subscribe to the channel and hit all on the notification bell and come back for the next video. Bye guys. Thank you.